Okay, so in the last video, we started looking at piecewise function. And this video lecture, we're going to look at M behavior. So M behavior is very much related to what we've already discussed involving asymptotes and limits. Um, and so, you know, at the M behavior of a function matters a lot because the whole point of limits is that we're examining what happens. So as we're going to let x get really close to a number, and we want to know the behavior of the function when this happens. Okay, so limits is all about, well, if x is approaching some number, what's happening to f of x? So specifically, we're going to look at the n behavior, which is when x approaches plus or minus infinity. So what is happening to the function as x approaches plus or minus infinity? So let's take three functions, for example. The first function is y equals x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. The second function is x squared minus 3x plus 3 over x minus 1. And the third function is y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 1 all over x squared plus 1. So three very different functions. They may have some similarities, but for the most part, they're pretty different from each other. So let's graph them and see what happens. Okay, so here's our first graph. So um, graphing functions should be something you're comfortable with, either using table of values or using a parent graph. So the, this first function, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, Four negative five. One, two, three, four. Okay. So here's our first function. And at x equals one, we have a hole. And then it's just a line that has a slope of one. Okay, so it's a straight line like this with a hole at x equals 1. The second function looks like this. So we have x and y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, 4, negative 5, 1, 2, 5. Okay, so this one has actually a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 and a slant asymptote at y equals x minus 2. So, yeah, so our function actually looks like this. Okay, and then our last function, here we go, we have x, we have y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 here. And we have a slant asymptote at y equals x minus 2. And our function ends up looking like this. Okay, so um, as you can see, the graphs of these functions look very different. This one has a, is a line with a hole in it. This one's a function with two asymptotes. This one's a function with one slant asymptote. Um, but notice what happens when we just look at the end behavior. So let's not even look at this beginning part, but let's look at what happens when x approaches positive and negative infinity. So we don't even care about this middle part. We just want to see what happens as x approaches positive and negative infinity. So as x approaches plus or minus infinity, you can see that the function starts 
looking the same. They all start looking like a line. And that line's equation is y equals x minus 2. Now, this is something that we can see for ourselves graphically, but something that we can also show algebraically. So let's take our three functions and simplify them algebraically. So first, let's simplify the first function. y equals x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. We can simplify this by factoring out the numerator. We do x minus 2 times x minus 1. For x plus 1. We share a numerator and denominator, this factor of x minus 1, so we can cancel and we are left with x minus 2. So as you can see, when we simplify this first function, it does end up resembling x minus 2. Let's look at the second function. y equals x squared minus 3x plus 3 over x minus 1. Now, this isn't really easy to factor, so what we can do is use polynomial division to simplify it. So we can just divide x squared minus 3x plus 3 divided by x minus 1. So how many x's go into x squared? x, we multiply back. So minus x squared minus x. This cancels out, and we are left with minus 3x plus x, which is minus 2x plus 3. Okay. And oops, sorry about that. X minus 1. Then we divide again. So minus 2x divided by x is minus 2. We multiply back. Plus 2. We cancel this out. We are left with 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. Okay, so we're left, we can't divide 1 divided by x minus 1, so that's our remainder. So our answer simplified. So x squared minus 3x plus 3 over x minus 1 is actually equal to x minus 2 plus. 1 divided by x minus 1. There's 1 divided by x minus 1. I can't simplify anymore. Now, again, we're looking at n behavior. So, we look at x approaching plus or minus infinity. So, as x approaches infinity, this approaches infinity. Okay? And remember, if we divide anything by infinity, it goes to zero. So again, we are left with y equals x minus 2 as our end behavior. Let's do the last function. So the last function was y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 1. Again, we can't really simplify this, so we can use polynomial division. x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 1. So um, x, x squared go into s cubed. We multiply back and subtract. Minus x cubed plus x. So we cancel. We're left with minus 2x squared minus 1. And then we know there's minus 2. So minus minus 2x squared minus 2. And this cancels out. And we're left with minus 1 plus 2 which is just positive one. So we're left with, again, we can't divide this into this. So we are left with x minus two plus the remainder one over x squared plus one. Again, we're looking at x approaching positive or minus infinity. So, this goes to infinity, meaning this whole thing goes to zero. So we are left with our end behavior of y equals x minus 2. So as you can see, when we algebraically simplified each of these functions um, and then looked at the end behavior, each function approached this line, y equals x minus 2. So we can see it both graphically happening, okay, as I get to... Positive infinity, negative infinity, 
I look like a straight line. Same thing with this one and this function as well. That's shown graphically and we showed it algebraically as well. So understanding the unbehavior of functions is very important because it's very much related to limits and horizontal asymptotes. And behavior is all about x approaching plus or minus infinity. What does my function start looking like? So um, maybe you can do some practice on your own and look at f of x equals 6x squared minus x plus 3 over 3x plus 1. So maybe you can either factor or use polynomial division to algebraically to simplify this function and describe its end behavior. And so it's something you can practice on your own and take a crack at it and see what you find out.